A huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. I put a ton of creative energy into the gardens here at our cottage, but what I didn't put a ton of energy into is building a website with Squarespace because they make it so easy. If you can drag and drop pictures and you know how to save a file, then you can build your next creative website with Squarespace. They've got ready to use templates that you can choose from and simply customize with whatever you like. This is exactly what we did when we launched Homemaker Chic Podcast last year, and we needed an easy way to link to social media pages and more. So whether you have a podcast, a nonprofit, an online community, or are looking for a way to easily sell your products, look no further than Squarespace. Get your new creative adventure started with a free trial and 10% off your purchase by visiting squarespace.com forward slash Elliot Homestead. Good morning, my friends. It's very early here on the farm, but we're getting a start on it because it's getting really hot during the days now, which means that if anything's going to get done in the kitchen, it needs to be early. This kitchen gets really hot at nighttime. And I wanted to show you a really simple and beautiful way to capture summer flavors that are coming out of the garden. Now, this is a kitchen project that's so simple, I almost don't need to show it to you, but you often don't think to do it unless you see it. And it really is a beautiful way to sort of individually craft some things that you want to use in your kitchen and kind of preserve those beautiful flavors. So this is bulk olive oil. I get this from Azure Standard on my monthly order. I do keep my jovial olive oil on hand, but I preserve that for things that are really special, things where I'm going to be enjoying that oil raw. And this oil we're actually going to be infusing with these beautiful herbs and seasonings from the garden. And so since I'm going to be heating it up, I'm gonna save the really good stuff for something else and use this bulk olive oil for this project. Here is all there is to it. I'm gonna divide the oil into four. So I'll get four different oils from this. And to this first quart, we'll go ahead and add this beautiful rosemary. This is a variety that I planted a few years ago. Normally rosemary isn't hardy here to our zone, but this rosemary is, and it has survived three winters and it's thriving, which means I have a lot of rosemary to play with. So there's a few reasons why we're going to actually heat up the oil. The first is to kill off any bacteria. Anytime you have a surface, especially out in the garden, the surface of these leaves, you're going to have bacteria. And most of the time that bacteria doesn't cause any problems and it probably wouldn't in this, but what it will do is make the oil go rancid. There's also water in these leaves because it's a living plant and that water will spoil the oil as well. And I want this oil to hold as long as it can, which means that I'm going to heat it up to sort of cook out the water and cook off the bacteria and just infuse it. And then we'll actually strain out the plants when it's done. So all that's left to do on this rosemary oil is to heat it up and let it simmer for about 30 minutes on the lowest heat possible. I'm gonna do the same thing now in a different pan, but this time we're gonna spice it up a little bit and I am going to infuse the olive oil with some red chili flakes that I harvested from chilies from last year's garden that I need to use up before this year's harvest comes off. So same thing, a quart of oil, I keep my spices really close at hand because I use them quite a bit. And to this quart of oil, I'm going to add two heaping tablespoons of red chili flakes. This is going to be spicy, but it's really good on chicken. And then let's see. Last but not least here, I'm gonna have to be really careful with this one because this is a hot burner. You really don't want to boil these. The idea is just to get it warm. Think about it like you're giving it a really nice bath. 
And what's gonna happen when you do that is it'll start to release all of its oils into the olive oil, which is where you get the flavor. All right, next up is some beautiful garlic from the garden. These were a few cloves that I decided to sacrifice to the oil because I forgot to cut the flour off the top, so it's a lot smaller bulb. Our ones that we store tend to be a lot bigger than this, so it's kind of the perfect way to use up a little leftover. Most all the garlic that I grow is a hard neck garlic, which means it has this long, dense stem that goes down the middle of it. And you can tell how fresh it is by how it peels and sometimes it's harder than others to get out when it's this fresh. There we go. One of the only reasons you can store garlic for long periods of time is because that skin, that really dry skin that it develops, but when it's pulled fresh up, there we go, pulled fresh out of the garden like this, that skin hasn't yet developed and so it just kind of peels off. These are gonna go into the garlic just like this. No, these are gonna go into the oil just like this. The exact amount of herbs and flavorings that you wanna use in your oil are completely subjective to what you like to eat. Now, when I use my chili oil, I like it to be really spicy because it's kind of a surprise to people. The garlic, again, I tend to like it a little bit stronger than maybe most people. I don't have a problem with garlic and really strong garlic at that. So I'm gonna add in actually probably around 10 or 15 cloves to this quart of oil. So I'm gonna let these oils simmer for about 30 minutes, keeping a very close eye on them because you do not want them to boil, which means it's the perfect time to make another cup of coffee, just sitting here with my oils for a while. So the oils have finished simmering and I've gone ahead and shut the burners off and let them cool to room temperature, which was the perfect amount of time for me to finish that last bit of coffee. So the only thing left now to do is to strain off the solids. I'm gonna start with the rosemary oil because this is probably gonna be the trickiest. 
the pan is still just a little bit hot, you can see how much the rosemary has transformed in just that little bit of time over really low heat. It smells so good. Can it fit? There we go. That olive oil is precious stuff. You gotta get as much as you can out. That worked really well. And now we'll see if I got the right size jars here. Ah! Oh, bummer, not quite. I will keep some of this on the counter to use just like this and then keep what's left over in the refrigerator where it will store for just a little bit longer. These should probably last at room temperature for about a month. Just smell it before you use it. It's really easy to tell if olive oil has gone rancid. But if you store it in the refrigerator, it'll last for even longer. Definitely do not throw those garlic cloves away because they'd be really good mushed up and put over pasta. Actually, you know what? Before I go further, I gotta label these. I made a ton of different cordials last year and different oils and vinegars. I did not label them, and some of them were still trying to figure out what they are. So before I go further, Now, because we used a dry spice in the chili oil, that could definitely stay in there if you don't want to strain it. But I am because I put a ton in and it would be really, really spicy if I let it stay in there and infuse for a bit longer. That's not gonna work. Oh, and it smells. It's smelling really, really good in the kitchen right now. Look at all the different colors. Aren't those beautiful? What you're left with when it's all said and done is really simple and beautiful oils to enjoy in your kitchen with almost no effort at all. Take the time to make, um, make something a little extra special for your kitchen. I hope you enjoy.